now that we've introduced equilibrium constants and some of the ways to calculate the equilibrium constant given information at equilibrium, let's move on to alternate uh, what we call important equilibrium constants. Just like we have the delta H of formation and the delta H of sublimation, these are particular enthalpies associated with particular reactions. And so what we really care about is also the reaction associated with them. So too do we have equilibrium constants that have specific reactions associated with them. So we've already talked about Kc and Kp. These are equilibrium constants associated with concentration and pressure. But there are also some that are more specific to um, certain environments. And the two we're going to talk about today are Kw and Ksp. And then we're going to focus a little bit on Ka and Kb um, in the next lecture. So let's talk first about um, Ksp and Kw. Kw is the often called the water dissociation constant or the water autoprotonolysis constant or my particular favorite Kw. So th this is the equilibrium constant associated with the following reaction. H2O undergoing, well depending on how you look at two H2O, liquids going to form H3O plus aqueous. And the, and the hydroxide ion. Now, if you remember our discussion about these equilibrium, Kw is, again, products over reactants, but because this, a, sorry, a liquid water in its liquid state, we need to eliminate it from the equilibrium. So this is the form of the equilibrium constant for this reaction would be H3O plus times OH minus and done. Now as it turns out, that water at 25 degrees centigrade, Kw always has the value of equal to 10 to the negative 14th, or 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. This is very important. This, is, um, this fact gives rise to our entire pH scale. So we'll talk about that in more detail in next week's class. So what this means is that any compounds inter interrelated via an equilibrium and an equilibrium constant, they are not independent of one another. That means that if you change the H3O plus concentration, the OH minus concentration responds. And so the two are always connected via this equilibrium, which is a constant in this case, Kw. So that means that we can use the predictive properties of this to say, OK, what is the hydroxide ion concentration when the hydronium ion concentration is equal to something or another? And this is central to what we're dealing with when we um, deal with the acids and bases and pH. So the take home message is there anytime you have something linked by an equilibrium, they are not independent. That means that the values of one are controlled by the values of the other. Another specific equilibrium constant is Ksp. Ksp is the solubility product product constant and it is specific to some sort of salt we'll just say MX3 this is a solid dissolving in water to form in this case the ions so when a salt dissolves in water and releases its respective ions there is an equilibrium associated with it. in this case the equilibrium is the product of the ions that's formed M plus 3 raised to its respective power, and the anion raised to its respective, respective power. So all reactions where a salt dissolves, there's a, an equilibrium constant associated. And it's always the solid going to the aqueous ions. Again, that means the solid does not show up in the equilibrium. So for something like lead chloride, 
the KSP of that material equals 1.7 times 10 to the negative fifth. So what does that tell us? It tells us that this is a very small number, and if just to review, very small equilibrium constants mean that the reaction favors primarily the reactants. Which is another way of saying that lead chloride does not dissolve. So that's just a review. This is your where your chemical knowledge comes in. Very large, very small equilibrium constants relate to reactions. But we can do better than that. We can actually do some predictive measures, too. The KSP associated with this reaction is equal to the concentration of the lead ion times the concentration of the chlorine ion squared. That means if you fix the chloride ion concentration to a certain value, it will limit how much lead could be present in solution. Think about that. Remember back in, you know, back in lab, you had these solutions, and then you added some HCl, and there was a lead chloride lead solution. This is our precipitation lab. We added a drop of HCl, and all of a sudden, boom, out come the yellow lead chloride, or the, the whitish yellow, the light. Out comes the lead chloride as a solid. Well, it's because we've increased the chloride ion concentration, forcing the lead ion to be out of solution. Because the concentration of lead is controlled by the concentration of the chlorine. The two are related to one another. So for more complex materials like Al2, SO4, 3, the KSP would have the form equal to the aluminum ion squared times the SO4 minus 2 ion cubed. And I guess we know that because Al2, SO4 as a solid dissolves in water to produce aluminum ions and sulfate ions with the following stoichiometry. And so then we can express this in terms of an equilibrium statement. All right, let's see it in action. Again, if we go back to our slides, we can take a look at our slides. And we'll start with a simple one. What is the hydroxide ion concentration when the H3O plus concentration is 5.8 times 10 to the minus third molar? So we know that H3O plus is equal to 5.8 times 10 to the negative third molar. Now, regardless, whenever you have water, Kw is in effect. Autoprotonolysis, water always will be decomposing to H3O plus and OH minus continuously. That means that the H3O plus concentration is present and the OH minus concentration is present. And these will always equal 10 to the negative 14th in, at, in water at, zero to, at um, 25 degrees centigrade. At higher and lower temperatures, the Kw value fluctuates. But for the most part, for the working range we're dealing with, it's pretty close to 10 to the negative 14th. By fixing it to 5.8 times 10 to the minus third, that means that the OH minus concentration has to be Kw divided by H3O plus equal to OH minus. We can plug those into our calculator and obtain a value. So what that means is plugging those values in. Again, Kw is equal to 10 to the negative 14th divided by the H3O plus concentration. The H3O plus concentration in this case was 5.8 times 10 to the negative third. And we can solve for the OH minus concentration of 1.72 times 10 to the negative 12. 
So simple algebraic manipulation, knowing aspects of the material at equilibrium controls other aspects at equilibrium. If you know three to five of them, if you know x, y, and z, and you know the constant, knowing any one aspect of these, if you need to know any one, if you have z and y, you can always solve for x through k. So let's take a look at a similar problem that deals with the lead chloride. Again, knowing what KSP is for lead chloride, the KSP the KSP is equal to, in this case, lead plus two chloride squared. Again, we know that from the reaction of PBCl2. in equilibrium with lead, chlor lead ion and chloride ion, two of them, in fact, we can make an argument regarding that, that if the KSP of lead chloride is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative fifth, What's the maximum lead concentration that would be possible before the lead chloride starts to precipitate? If you have a chloride ion concentration equal to 4.21 times 10 to the minus third. As you slowly ramp up this, the equilibrium constant the equilibrium expression says that at equilibrium, the lead will be have a chloride has to be um, related to chloride ion via KSP, and so KSP divided by the chloride ion concentration squared will equal the maximum lead iodine concentration lead concentration before it precipitates. So in this case, it's 1.6 times 10 to the minus fifth divided by 4.21 times 10 to the minus third, in this case squared, will equal the maximum lead iodine concentration. Or 0.902. So let's, let's play another game. Let's change this around a little. What chloride ion concentration would be required to precipitate 0 0.1 molar lead chloride? Lead. What would be the chloride ion concentration? This should be fairly similar calculation, the KSP and the relationship to the lead. Except that the only wrinkle is that once we set up the equation, this will be equal to the chloride ion concentration squared. And so we have to take the square root of both sides. And numerically, the way to do that is actually to plug those values into your calculator. And this determines that the maximum chloride ion concentration what is the minimum chloride ion concentration required to precipitate the lead would be equal to at least 1.26 to 
times 10 to the minus 2 molar. Now, if you did it right, you should be able to take this chloride ion concentration and this lead iodine con lead concentration, and they should return you the equilibrium constant and I get 1.6 times 10 to the minus fifth which is equivalent to our equilibrium constant. So KSP and KW, what they mean, what the reactions are, and how to use neutralize them. But the other trick to remember is they're just equilibrium. It's just their specific equilibrium reactions.